video, we will be talking about Consumer Protection Act. Now, Consumer Protection Act, this act compels both the businesses and the customers to act responsible when they are conducting uh, the business. Even the customers, when maybe they buy, they need to conduct themselves responsible. That's what we'll be talking about. Now, the first part that we'll be talking about, it's the purpose. What purpose? of Consumer Protection Act. Now we've got six effects that we'll be talking about. Our first fact, it promotes responsible consumer behavior. In other words, the customers, they're supposed to act responsible. Then our second point, it establishes national standards to protect the customers. In other words, the customers will be protected. It's the responsibility of the, the business to protect the customers. And then our third point, it established National Consumer Commission. National Consumer Commission is a commission that protects the customers. Then our fourth point, it promotes and protects the economic interest of the customers by providing information. In other words, when the customer buys a product, the, the business need to provide information in terms of when I buy uh, my iPhone, they uh, gave uh, the information on how to use it. It's the responsibility of the, uh, the seller to give information in terms of uh, the product. And then the following point, it promotes fair and accessible sustainability for people to sell their product. It, in other words, it gives the sellers the platform or the market where they can sell their product. And then the other point, it promotes consistent laws relating to customers' transaction and the agreement. In other words, consistency, the laws mustn't continuously change. Uh, when you go next week, the law is that. When you go the other week, the law is that. It should be consistent. It must not change continuously. Let's make all things fair. And the last point, it promotes customers' safety by protecting them from hazardous products in other words from products that are not correct that won't be good for the customers now we are going to uh, go to the topic the impact remember guys when we talk about the impact we are talking about the effectiveness the question might say effectiveness we've got positive effectiveness negative effectiveness or positive impact and negative impact therefore we're going to start with positives now our first point on positive impact uh, the businesses may be safeguarded from dishonest competitors you know when you are selling a product you've got competitors now at times the, comp the, the your, your competitors they would like to mislead maybe your customers or what so now the businesses are protected or are safeguarded from the dishonest of the competitors she's lying that's a lie now our second point the business may be protected if they are regarded as customers why business are customers at times they go and buy their raw materials by the time they are buying they are regarded as customers they also protected the businesses and then our third point it prevents larger businesses from undermining smaller businesses so in other words you don't have to undermine anyone in terms of businesses you are not going to take advantage of the smaller business just because you are financially strong you are a big business therefore you take for granted of the smaller businesses and then the fourth point it may gain customer loyalty if they comply with consumer protection customers will be loyal guys ne? really loyal and then we go to the fifth point it enables the businesses to resolve dispute fairly through the national consumer commission or through in other words consumer court or through a industrial ombudsman so now the businesses if they've got disputes they know exactly where to go they can go to court they can go to ombudsman and then they are going to resolve their issues there then our last point the business may build a good image if they ensure that 
they do not violate the 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 consumer protection act laws therefore they definitely going to have a good image that will be our positive impact and then now let's go to our negative impact negative 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 now we've got five points in terms of a negative impact then our first point the customers can take advantage of the business and return goods when uh, it is not necessary to do so because they know that the law protects them then they can take that advantage i'm going to return this i don't want it anymore okay. and then our second point the processes and procedure required by consumer protection act can be expensive and can be time consuming that is why it is a negative impact then our third point confidential business information may be available to the competitors you know the law forces the companies to disclose certain information so that information can be available to the competitors they have to disclose more information about the product and the service and their processes that is not good for the business. At times you want to hide certain information so that you defeat your competitors. So now the law forces these businesses to disclose all the information that might not be good for the, the business. And then our fourth point, penalties for non-compliance may be very, very high for the business. Therefore, now we are going to talk about the non-compliance or the discrimination actions according to consumer. How do you discriminate in terms of Consumer Protection Act? Or how do you conduct non-compliance in terms of Consumer Protection Act? You are discrimination when you deny your consumer proper information. You don't want to give that information to a customer bought a television set, doesn't know how to use that. If you deny that information, you don't want to give that information to that customer, then you are conducting non-compliance. Then the second point, when you are treating customers differently, when you are discriminating, maybe it could be based on gender, age, race. If you discriminate, therefore, in terms of your customers, you are conducting in non-compliance. When you are charging unfair prices uh, for the same goods, at times in rural areas, you'll find that your price for a 2 kg test stick is 45 rand, and then at urban areas, it's uh, different. Therefore, you are conducting a non-compliance. That's unfair. It's incredibly unfair. And then the other point, the fourth point, when we are varying your quality of goods, when we are selling uh, to different areas, we are selling uh, some metric dresses at Sentin, and then the quality of your dress is not the same uh, as if you are selling them there at uh, Guatemala. Then if the quality of your raw materials is not there, you vary your quality of your goods, we are conducting a non-compliance. Then our last point in terms of non-compliance, when you are prioritizing any customer or group over another group of market, you know you know that those people, they are wealthy. Now you give them priority that rather than the customers that they are poor. Therefore, you will be conducting a non-compliance. Falsifying information, such as country of origin, type of ingredients and expiry dates, ETC about the product. Straight from Paris. Now, we know that just after non-compliance, then there will be penalties. How are you going to be penalized in terms of a consumer protection act? The first point, the contract may be revoked. You know that by now. The contract may be terminated. Your license, in other words, may be revoked to conduct a business because you are, you are, you are conducting a non-compliance. 
and then the second point the business may face fines or imprisonment the person who conducted that illegal conduct may face imprisonment <laughs> For a particular year, 10 years, 5 years, a J. The government agencies may conduct audits and fine, even dissolve that business entirely or to stop the conduct of that particular business. If that business can be closed down, we know that by now. Ne. The business will be forced to compensate customers in line with the extent to which the rights have been violated. Depending on uh, the, the business violated the, the rights of the customers how much they can charge that uh, business for not conducting themselves correctly right now we will be talking about the ways in which the business can comply now how do you comply remember when you comply it's how do you do good in terms of consumer protection number one you have to disclose all the prices you don't need to hide the price or when the customer enter you change prices to uh, 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 uh. you need to disclose all the price of the the products that are in sale people must be visible people must see and then the second point all the agreements must provide a five-day cooling off period if one has bought an item that customer has got the right in five days to change if he's no more interested in that contract, is that customer's right to change that agreement? I, I, I'm not more interested with that um, agreement that I've made. We call it five-day cooling off period. And then the third point, the business is supposed to display the name of the business on all the business document, on all the business invoices, slips, contracts. It's the responsibility of the, uh, the business to ensure that they display the name of the business and then the fourth point the business is supposed to provide adequate training to staff in terms of consumer product the customer the your workers must know exactly how to treat your customers because you've provided what training to staff i was training training the business need to comply with the requirements regarding promotional. Uh, there are laws that the business need to um, follow when they are promoting, when they are selling products. They need to comply with those laws. And then the last one, the business need to comply with the requirements regarding to display the information on the labels, on the packaging. It's the responsibility of the business to display, guys. All the information if you are selling what they need to put the label on that uh, display all the information about that uh, particular product the customer must know if one is buying a uh, milk like this they need to disclose what is what, what's inside here the ingredients are supposed to stay the energy you must state how much energy is their proteins what it should be it should show the responsibility of consumer uh, protection and and we've got the rights of the consumers i have rights we've got nine rights of consumer protection act that we are going to talk about the right to choose when you talk about the right, the customers, they've got the right to choose. You cannot force a customer. When a customer enter into your promise, you cannot force or choose for a, it's the right of the customer to choose exactly the supplier or to choose the good or to choose the product that you want to buy. It's the responsibility of you as a customer to choose. Now, the second right that we'll be talking about, it's a right to privacy and confidentiality. Privacy and confidentiality, how? If the information that you've given that a seller, you mustn't take that information and give it to other people. It's your right to, to that information to be protected, guys. Then protecting your personal information. And then the following right that we have, a right to fair and honest dealings. Now, when we talk about fair and honest dealings, the suppliers may not use or physical force or harass the customer that you must buy this or you must, uh, it's your right to enter into any contract, not forcefully. 
And then the other right that we are going to talk about, the right to information about the product and the agreement. If you are going to buy any product, it's your right to enter, uh, to, to get every information about that particular product before. Maybe you're buying a house. It's your right to be told that um, this house in a seven years and there's a leakage there and what happened to that house. It's your right as a customer to, to be given that information. They need to disclose every information about that product that you are buying. Then the following right that we'll be talking about, it's a right to fair and responsible marketing promotion. In other words, marketing, they don't have to mislead people, advertise lies. When you reach that promises, I, I say, oh, sorry, sorry, that the, the thing is no more. They, they, have, they have to promote correctly. They must not mislead customers on pricing of the goods. They need to price them correctly. Then the following right that we'll be talking about, it's a right to accountability from the supplier. The customers have a right to be protected. In terms of laid by agreements, you have got the right to be protected. And then the business should honor the credit vouchers and the prepaid services that are they provided to the customers. And then the other right that we'll be talking about, it's a right to fair just reasonable terms when we talk about fair or just or reasonable terms it means the business should provide customers with a written notice of clauses that might limit customers right the business may not market or sell goods unfairly or give unfair pricing of the items Therefore, you go to the other right, the right to equality in the customer market. The business should not limit uh, access to goods and services. They are not supposed to. And then the business may not vary the quality of their goods. For, to the other customers, the quality is like that. And then to these other customers, the quality is like that. And then the other one, they need not to discriminate. The, all of those they fall are under the right of equality. Remember equality? Equality means equal, remember. And then we go to the other right, the right to return goods. It's the right of the customers. If you are not happy about uh, the product that you've bought, there is a defect on that uh, product. We are not happy about it's your right. The, the product that you bought, it is faulty. Something is not correct. If you are not, it's your right to return that item that you've bought. Then the last right that we'll be talking about, the right to complain. I came here to complain. The customers, if they are not happy about the method, about they've got the right to complain about maybe the service that were provided to you, you you know, it's your right as a customer to complain, to voice it, something out. Here is the address to complain to. <laughs> and that is uh, the last part of our... Uh, Thank you very much for watching uh, this video. I would appreciate again if you can always subscribe to our videos. Then next time we will be doing human resource in the next video. We'll be talking about human resource. Very interesting topic. Thank you very much.